Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about design options of GreenShift plugin. These options are available absolutely in each block of GreenShift plugin. Also, you can add them to any block. In order to do this, you just need to select the block and then click on this icon paragraph. And then you just need to click on transform to container. So now, as we can see, the container was added to the block and also, there are many options here on the right side that were added as well. So first of all, all numerical values have the ability to set them for each resolution separately. The values that you set by default will be used for all resolutions. For example, let's say if we set 100% or for example 30%, it will be always used for all resolutions. But also, if you click on one of the icons, you can set a separate value for this particular resolution. For example, for mobile devices, we want our block to always have a width of 100%. Moreover, some options also have the ability to set variable values, meaning that it will be calculated mathematically based on our defined values. For example, we can set a minimum width value that will always take the half of the space, which is 50%. So we enter 50 here, but no more than 300 pixels, like this. Variable options are more intended for advanced users and complex sites, so most likely you're only going to use usual values. More information about flexible content options you can find on our previous video. So now we'll focus on background and overlay effects. At first glance, these options are very similar. They allow you to set a background and a background image, but these two options work in completely different ways and you can also use them together. So let's now check how they work. So we have added a section on full width and we have done this by adding a block row and then we have set a full width from here. Also, we have chosen a background color. Apart from choosing a classic background, we can also add a gradient or even a video. Here we can choose a background image. So let's choose, for example, this one. To extend the image on the whole layer, we need to click here and then to select cover. We can also select contain. In this case, our image will be fully shown. However, this is not always what we need. So for the background, usually we are going to use cover or O2. Here, there is also an option called Parallax Effect, and if we turn it on, our background will look like this. So, let's now see what the difference between background and overlay is. When we put an image on our background, we cannot do anything with it, meaning that the image is a part of the background. However, if we add the image in an overlay, Let's choose an image. Let's choose this one. So we are adding it in an overlay and the image itself will be displayed as a separate layer and we can add additional effects to it. For example, we can add some filters as the ones that you use when editing posts on Facebook or Instagram or on Visual Editor. So we can change its color make it blurry or if you want you can add other different effects apart from filters you can also use hover effects here on the right side so here we can add different effects that will work when hovering the mouse it's important to know that in order to check how it works in the editor, 
we need to enable show in editor option from here. But uh, this is optional because if you want to start typing, it doesn't look very good. So if you want to continue editing this block, you need to first disable this option. So you need to click on no and you can then edit the block itself. But this option will work as usual on the website. Now I will show you some interesting examples so you can see how it works. So we will first enable the option show in editor and also we'll enable the clip overflow option. Now the image is not going to go outside of our block. The next example is hover opacity. If we set zero here, as you can see, if we hover the mouse, the image is disappearing. Or if you want, you can do the opposite to set a starting value of zero and a hover opacity of one. Then when we hover the mouse, the image will appear. The next example is shift. This is how it works. So usually this effect is used not with an image, but with a classic background. So for example, we are choosing a cover. Let's choose, for example, this cover. And as you can see, when hovering the mouse, this is the effect that we get. Also, you can use different easing effects. You can also set a hover speed. And also you can set the hover rotate. And this is how it works. You can mix different effects and the result will be very interesting. Just experiment and make your sites more unique and more interesting. In one of the next videos, I will also show you how to use these options for creating interesting buttons and button effects. So subscribe and watch out our next videos. Meanwhile, let's move on to the next option, which is called spacing. So spacing allows you to make indents from other blocks as well as indents inside the block. Since this option will be used quite frequently, we have added it to the toolbar because it's much more convenient. You just need to click on this button and you will see the option here. Moreover, there are additional options here. Overflow. It's very useful if you suddenly notice on the website a horizontal scroll depending on your elements. So in this case, in order to prevent this, you can just enable hidden. This will allow you to cut off all the elements that go outside of your block and to put away the horizontal scroll. The next option is border. It allows you to add borders to your elements it's important to know that this option works only if you add all three values, meaning that you need to choose style, then you need to choose size. So let's put one here and also a cover. The cover can be a bit transparent as well. You can also add round corners from here. As you can see on the block above, we have round corners of 50 pixels. When you edit any options that contain several values, you can click on the icon here. And then if you increase one of the values, 
the change will be applied to all the values. If you disable it, then you can change each value separately. So let's continue. The next option is typography. This option allows you to set the fonts that are used in our block. And here we have several values of the color. There are a separate text color and a link color. Please note that any text in the editor may have a different formatting and also links. To do this, you just need to mark the text first and then to click on this button. Now you can add a link to the text. So let's add the link. As you can see, it's red now, but we can easily change this. So we first need to select the block and then we can change the color. We can change it from here, links color. Underlining the link depends on the theme that you use. In some themes, the links are underlined, but not for all. But if you want, you can enable this option here, link underline transition, and here you can see how it works. In the typography section, you can also choose a size of the text, a line height, and font. There are also letter options where you can add spacing between the symbols. Also, there is an option which is called letter break and it shows on how the block will react if the text goes outside of the block frames. Another option here is Shadow. Apart from this, one of the plugin's features is that you can add three shadows simultaneously, meaning that this allows you to create a 3D text. It looks very interesting, especially when the size of the text is bigger. And I will show you now how this works. The next option is Shadow. It's very similar to the shadow that is used for text, but here they will be applied to the block. As in the text shadow, here there are also already set shadows, as you can see here on the right side. There are hover effects, as well as there is an option to add three shadows at the same time. This allows to create different 3D effects, like for example, we'll just add a vertical offset here. And for the second shadow, we'll add a blur. And this is the effect that we get. The option that we are going to talk about next is Shape Divider. It is available on block elements and it allows to add an effect on top or on the bottom. It's very important to choose the correct background color of your block and the blocks that are on the top or on the bottom. So since here in this part the color is white, it would be great if we choose also white as a top shape. So let's choose white color. And this is the effect that we get. We can change its height or shape. Also, there is a great variety of different shapes here.
Moreover, there are several interesting functions here that I'm going to show you now. So the first one is add half opacity effect. It adds some kind of translucency to these elements that contain several blocks. So here we have elements that contain one block only. Like this, for example, and there are elements that contain several blocks like this one. As we can see, there is a kind of gradient of transparency and in order for it to be displayed in the right way, you need to place this block correctly. So in our case, we need to enable flip X. We can also add an option animate on view. So let's enable it. And this is the effect that we get. If you like experimenting and creating something unique, you can use this option, which is called advanced gradient. And it allows you to use custom colors and to make your block more interesting. Each color has also transparency, so if you want to make your block fully transparent, you just need to move the slider here. There is also an option which is called Offset. It allows you to create such interesting translucent overlays and animate them. The next set of options you can find here in advanced. So here we can choose a block animation. In the animation type, there are already set animations as well as custom ones. And here uh, you can also create your own animations. So here you can set also a duration of the animation, a delay, as well as easing of the animation. You can set it from here. There is also a special GSAP animation library. This library is only available if you have a, an addition, which is advanced animations. You can buy it in the GreenShift tab additions. This library allows you to make your animation even more smooth. And of course, there are also many other additional options. For example, there is an option to enable child animations. Additionally, there are many other options for more interesting effects that we are going to see further in the next videos. The next option is called CSS Transform. It allows to edit your block without influencing on other blocks. And I will tell you now what is the difference here. So for example, when you're choosing spacing, the spacing also affects the other blocks that are above or below. And if we put 150 here, the blocks below will move. CSS Transform allows to add different transformations without influencing on other blocks and without influencing the position of this block. For example, we can increase one of our blocks here. And as you can see, the blocks that are located below do not change their position. 
We can add any values here. We can add even negative ones. These options are usually used in two cases. So the first one is, for example, when we want to make different kinds of overlaps, like this block runs over our top block, and here we can just set negative margins, but it's much better if we just use CSS transform. Also, these options are very helpful for different kinds of effects in mouse hover. And let's see how it works. So let's say that we have a button and what we need to do now is just to go to the hover section and to add a scale of 1.2. Now, when we hover the mouse, the button is getting bigger like this. It's very important also to set a transition time. Usually, it's 0.4 or 0.5 in order to make it smoother. One of the unique features of GreenShift plugin is the option to set a specific class that will be used later for the transition effect. So let me explain what does it mean. When hovering the mouse, this is the effect that we get. So it works only when you hover the mouse to a specific object. However, you can also add a specific class that will be used for creating this effect. For example, I want this button to get bigger not only when I hover the mouse on it, but also when I hover the mouse on the whole block. So here, we need to add a class of the block. In order to find out the class, we need to go to Developer Tools. Then we need to click on this button and then we select the element. Now we need to click on the class button and here we see that we have a unique class of this block which is called GSPB row. Usually all the elements in GreenShift plugin have the names of such classes GSPB and then the name of the element itself. So let's try to enter it here. Now, when we hover the mouse on the block, the button is getting bigger. It's good to increase the conversion because it adds some kind of visual effect as well. Apart from this, we also have another option which is called Hover Delay. It allows to add different effects that will appear one after another. As you can see, for now, we only have an effect on the button, but we can also add it to the text as well. So we are doing absolutely the same as earlier. We add a class, and then we add the transition time, and this is the effect that we get. So now the effect is applied simultaneously, but we can add a hover delay to the button. And this is how it works. It looks really good, especially if you have several elements and they appear one after another when hovering the mouse on the block. For advanced users, there is also an option which is called Use as Transition Class. It is used when you use your block inside some kind of scripts, for example, sliders or carousels. Also, in GreenShift plugin, there is a block which is called Slider and Carousel.
When using it, it adds a separate class in the current slider frame, and we can use this slider to add different effects to the current slide. So here I have used this class so that additional elements are added when each slide appears. But we'll consider this element in details in our next videos. The next option is called Position and it allows to add different types of positioning to our block. When you add blocks by default, they will be positioned relative to other blocks that you have on the page. But you can change this and to use, for example, Absolute Positioning here. And now we can choose manually the position of our block relative to the container that it is located into. We can add both positive and negative values. These options are often used in combination with CSS transformations. For example, if you want to center the block to make it to be exactly in the middle, you can just add 50% here, like this, then we change to percent and we delete the minus. And in CSS transformation, you can also add 50%, but with a negative mark, like this. So now this block is located exactly in the middle, and it doesn't depend on the length of the block. As you can see, it is in the middle and it has an absolute position. This is very important in such cases as here. Actually, this design is quite complex and in some editors it cannot be done. Here we have several blocks that overlap each other and at the same time a part of the block is located centrally. And when we get to it, this is the effect that we get. Also, here we have an option called Z-Index. It shows the order of overlays. If you have several elements that overlap each other, for example, in our case, we have a block which is on the bottom and another one which is above it. So we set a Z-Index of 2 for this one and Z-Index 1 for this one. So this block overlaps the block which is below. When you use absolute position, very often our block doesn't look very good on mobile devices. For example, we have an image here that has an absolute position and an indent of 87 pixels. These pixels look pretty good on big resolutions, but on mobile devices it's not going to look like this. And sometimes it's better to just disable it at all for mobile devices. So in order to do this, you need to enable hide on mobile. We are going to responsive and we see hide on mobile. So for example, as you can see on mobile devices, this image looks quite big and it doesn't fit at all. So we just enable hide on mobile here. But instead of disabling the image, you can just change its position. So if we click on this icon here, we can set a specific value that will be working only on mobile devices. Also, if you are good at CSS, here you can add a custom CSS. And there is a specific placeholder here, green shift. So when you apply it here, 
The values will be applied specifically to the block in which your code is located and it won't be working for other blocks. Also, in each block, there is a set of options. For example, for the block of the container, there is an option which is called anchor. And here you can add your own anchor for each block. So for example, we'll add button. Now we click on update to save the changes. And if we open the link in a new tab, if we add the anchor here using this symbol, the user will be automatically directed to this block. So you can send this link to other people and if they open it, they will go directly to our block and not to the beginning of the page. So that's all for today. God bless you and your sites and see you in the next video.